Hello and welcome everyone. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the uropathogenic E. coli that is the causative agent of UTI. In this video, we will focus on the symptoms and lab diagnosis of UTI. We have already discussed about the morphology, pathogenesis, virulence factor and general lab diagnosis of E. coli in before presentations in part 1 and part 2. Now we will focus on the urinary tract infections. Okay, so urinary tract infection is caused by the uropathogenic E. coli that is UPEC uh, that is the causative agent of UTI. It accounts for 70 to 75 percent cases. Uh, the serotypes are O1, O2, O4, O6, O7 and O75. Now we will discuss about the roots of spread of E. coli. Like in the host, if E. coli is present in the host, then how it will spread into the body of the host. So there are two roots, ascending and descending. Uh, ascending, first we will discuss about the ascending. For example, if a E. coli enters to the body host, E. coli is also already entered into the body host, it will first colonize the periurethral area. After colonizing the periurethral area, it will go further, it will ascend to bladder where it will produce inflammation that led to cystitis and urethritis and after reaching bladder, it will move further, it will move uh, ascending to the kidney, it will reach the kidney after reaching bladder where it will again produce the inflammation that is called pyelonephritis. Next is descending root. In the descending uh, route, E. coli spread through the blood or the hematogenous seeding. It will reach the kidney with the help of blood and produce inflammation that is pyelonephritis. Next is, uh, according to the site involved, for example, where the E. coli is producing infection in the host, according to the site, UTI is divided into two parts that is lower UTI and upper UTI. If the site involved is bladder or urethra, then it is called lower UTI. If a site involved is kidney or ureter, then it is called upper UTI. The symptoms um, in the lower UTI that can be seen are dysuria, urgency and frequency. Next is in the upper UTI, we can see the symptoms fever and vomiting. Next is root of spread. In the lower UTI, E. coli spread through the ascending root. And in the upper UTI, E. coli can spread through the both roots that is ascending as well as descending. Virulence factor uh, responsible for the lower UTI are fimbria and the virulence factor that are responsible for the upper UTI are K antigen. In spite of these two antigens, other uh, virulence factors are also involved in the UTI that are cytotoxins and hemolysins. Next, we will discuss about the predisposing factors that are what type of hosts are more susceptible to the UTI. So, first is female. Females are more susceptible to UTI than male because of the short urethra and close proximity to the anus. Next is urinary obstruction. The person suffering from the renal stones are more susceptible to the UTI. And the last one is pregnancy. Because of pregnancy, there is physiological obstruction in the urinary tract due to growing fetus because of which pregnant lady become more susceptible to UTI. Okay, next we have the laboratory diagnosis of uropathogenic E. coli that is UPEC. In this lab diagnosis, we will discuss about the specimen transport, direct examination, culture and antibiotic coated bacteria test. Let's go through it. First, we will discuss about the specimen collection. So, if a patient is suffering from the UTI, uh, we can collect clean voided midstream urine, suprapubic aspiration. Suprapubic aspiration is taken in case of only coma patient or in case of infants. And the last one is from the catheter tube. Sample is also, uh, urine is also collected from the catheter tube, but not from the back. Next is transport. A specimen can be uh, stored in the refrigerator or we, uh, we can store the specimen or sample by adding boric acid and glycerol in that sample for 24 hours. 
नेक्स्ट इज डायरेक्ट एग्जामिनेशन इन द डायरेक्ट एग्जामिनेशन वन कैन गो थ्रू वेट माउंट एग्जामिनेशन ल्यूकोसाइड ईस्ट्रेस टेस्ट नाइट्रेट रिडक्शन टेस्ट एंड लास्ट इज ग्राम स्टेनिंग इन वेट माउंट एग्जामिनेशन इट इज डन टू डेमोस्ट्रेट द पर्सल्स इन द यूरिन पायूरिया ऑफ मोर देन एट पर सेल पर एम एम क्यूब इज टेकन एज सिग्निफिकेंट एंड द नेक्स्ट इज ग्राम स्टेनिंग इट इज नॉट रिलियबल इंडिकेटर ग्राम स्टेनिंग इज नॉट अ गुड इंडिकेटर इन केस ऑफ यू टी आई बिकॉज बैक्टीरियल काउंट इन द यूरिन इज वेरी लो एंड द नेक्स्ट थिंग इज दैट ग्राम स्टेनिंग इज लिमिट टू लिमिटेड टू पायलोनेफ्राइटिस लाइक इन केस ऑफ पायलोनेफ्राइटिस वी कैन यूज द ग्राम स्टेनिंग ओके नेक्स्ट वी हैव द ल्यूकोसाइड ईस्ट्रेस टेस्ट इट इज द चीपर मैथड एंड डिटेक्ट द ल्यूकोसाइड ईस्ट्रेस सिक्रेटेड बाय द पर्स सेल प्रेजेंट इन द यूरिन ओके लेट्स गो अहेड विथ कल्चर सो द कल्चर मीडियाज दैट वी कैन यूज इन केस ऑफ इकलाय आर ब्लड अगान मेकॉन्की सी एल ई डी दैट इज सिस्टीन लैक्टोज इलेक्ट्रोलाइट डेफिशियंट अगार नेक्स्ट इज कास कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सिग्निफिकेंट बैक्टीरिया बैक्टीरियूरिया कास कंसेप्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन द फैक्ट दैट द नॉर्मल यूरिन इज स्टराइल बट इट मे गेट कंटामिनेटेड ड्यूरिंग वॉइडिंग ओके द कास कंसेप्ट इज बेस्ड ऑन अ फैक्ट दैट नॉर्मल यूरिन इज स्टराइल बट इट मे गेट कंटामिनेटेड ड्यूरिंग वॉइडिंग सो बिकॉज ऑफ विच बैक्टीरियल काउंट Uh, in the contaminated urine would be lower than the actual than in the actual infection okay so a count of more than 10 to the power or equal 10 to the power 5 colony forming per unit that is cfu per ml is significant okay if a uh, count is 10 to the power 5 colony forming unit per ml then we can say that a person is suffering from uti lower count of uh, less than 10 to the power 4 cfu per ml is due to the commensal bacteria and is not regarded as significant it is not of any use last we have is the quantitative culture this is done to count the number of colonies okay for this we can use the standardized loop technique as well as pore plate method Okay this is the end of our this video in the next video we will discuss about the diagenic strain thank you